This video talks about types of memory used in embedded system. Memory types Types of RAM The RAM family includes two important memory devices Static RAM SRAM and Dynamic RAM DRAM The primary difference between them is the lifetime of the data they store. SRAM retains its contents as long as electric power is applied to the chip. If the power is turned off or lost temporarily, its contents will be lost forever. DRAM, on the other hand, has an extremely short data lifetime, typically about 4 milliseconds. Even when power is applied, constantly. A hardware called DRAM controller can be used to make DRAM behave like SRAM. The DRAM controller is to periodically refresh the data stored in the DRAM. By refreshing the data before it expires, the contents of memory can be kept alive as long as they are needed. When deciding which type of RAM to use, a system designers must consider access time and cost. SRAM devices offer extremely fast access time, approximately four times faster than DRAM, but are much more expensive to produce. Generally, SRAM is used only where access speed is extremely important. A lower cost per byte makes DRAM attractive whenever large amounts of RAM are required. Many embedded systems include both types, a small block of SRAM, a few kilobytes and a much larger blocks of DRAM for everything else. Types of ROM Memories in the ROM family are distinguished by the methods used to write new data to them, usually called programming, and the number of times they can be rewritten. The ROM devices are categorized from hardwired to programmable to erasable and programmable. A common feature of ROM devices is their ability to retain data and programs forever, even during a power failure. Masked ROMs are hardwired devices, that is, it contains a pre-programmed set of data or instructions. Advantage of a masked ROM is its low production cost when large quantities of the same ROM are required. PROM Programmable ROM The process of writing your data to the PROM involves a special piece of equipment called a device programmer. The device programmer writes data to the device one word at a time by applying an electrical charge to the input pins of the chip. Once a PROM has been programmed in, the way, in this way, its contents can never be changed. PROMs are also known as one-time programmable OTP devices. An EPROM, Erasable and Programmable ROM is programmed in exactly the same manner as a PROM. However, EPROMs can be erased and reprogrammed repeatedly. To erase an EPROM, you simply expose the device to a strong source of UV, ultraviolet light. A window in the top of the device allow the light to reach the silicon. By doing this, it 
resets the entire chip. EEPROM are expensive than PROM. Their ability to be reprogrammed makes EEPROM an essential part of the software development and testing process. Hybrid. This type of memory combines features of both RAM and ROM, referred as hybrid memory devices. Hybrid memories can be read and written as desired, like RAM, but retain their contents without electrical power, just like ROM. Two of the hybrid devices, E square PROM or EE PROM and Flash are descendants of ROM devices. These are typically used to store code. E square PROMs are electrically erasable and programmable. Erase operation is accomplished electrically. Any byte within an E square PROM can be erased and rewritten. Once written, the new data will remain in the device until it is electrically erased. Flash memories. Devices are highly density, low cost, non-volatile, fast to read but not to write, and electrically reprogrammable. Flash devices can only be erased one sector at a time. Typical sector size are in the range 256 bytes to 16 KB. The third hybrid memory is NVRAM, non-volatile RAM, a modified version of SRAM with a battery backup. NVRAM usually holds persistent data. NVRAMs are expensive, even more expensive than SRAM. Because of the battery, new type of non-volatile memory added to the family is FRAM, ferroelectric random access memory, a type of non-volatile memory developed by Ramtron International Cooperation. FRAM combines the access speed of DRAM and SRAM with the non-volatile of ROM. Because of its high speed, it is replacing E square PROM in many devices. Table summarizes the features of each type of memory. Keep in mind that different memory types serve different purposes. Each memory type has its strengths and weaknesses. Microcontrollers usually contain a small amount of internal RAM as well as ROM storage. Maybe a as little as 256 bytes up to a few kilos. Some applications are engineered to use just on-chip RAM as an economy. External RAM may cost as much as a processor. Example, Hyundai HM62256 BPL7 is an SRAM chip with 32 KB capacity and an access time of 70 nanosecond. Flash memory devices, high density, low cost, non-volatile, fast to read but not to write and electrically reprogrammable. Many microcontrollers may include an area of non-volatile memory internally. Atmel 89C51 8-bit microcontroller with 2 KB internal flash. Memory bus wiring. 
If there are 8 bits in data bus, then a 32 bit data write or read requires 4 bus cycles. If there are 20 bits in the address, the total addressable memory space is 1 MB, that is 2 power of 20. There may be multiple memory chips within the addressable range. Even different types RAM, ROM, EEPROM, flash, so on. And unfilled holes in the address range. Memory map. The memory map of a microcontroller is a diagram which gives the size, type and layout of the memories that are available in the microcontroller. The information used to construct the memory map is extracted from the data sheet of the microcontroller. Memory of the microcontroller is divided into program memory, a memory that contains the program. Program counter executes commands stored in the program memory one after the other. Data memory, this is RAM memory, which contains a special registers like SFR, special function register, and GPR, general purpose register. The variables that we store in the data memory during the program are deleted after we turn off the controller. Common memory problems. Once the prototype hardware is ready, the board's designer would like some reassurance that he she has wired the address and data lines correctly and that the various memory chips are working properly. Even if that's not the case, it is desirable to test any onboard RAM at least as often as the system is reset. Wiring between the processor and memory device. An electrical wiring problem could be caused by an error in design or production of the board. The wires that connects the memory device to the processor are address line, data line and control line. The address and data lines are used to select the memory location and to transfer the data respectively. The control lines tells the memory device whether the processor wants to read or write the location and when the data will be transferred. Unfortunately, one or more of these wires could be improperly routed or damaged in such a way that it is either shorted, connected to another wire on the board or open that is not connected to anything. These problems are often caused by a, a bit of solder splash or a broken trace respectively. Problems with the electrical connections to the processor will cause the memory device to behave incorrectly. Data may be stored incorrectly, stored at the wrong address or not stored at all. Missing memory chips. Due to the capacitive nature of unconnected electrical wires, some memory test will not detect this problem. For example, Suppose you decide to use the following test algorithm. Write value 1 to the first memory location. Verify value by reading it back. Write 2 to the second location. Verify the value and so on. Since each read occurs immediately after the corresponding write, the data is read back it will appear that the data has been correctly stored 
in memory even though there is no memory chip at the other end of the bus to detect missing memory chip or the test must be altered perform several consecutive writes followed by the same number of consecutive reads improperly inserted chips if a memory chip is present but improperly inserted in its socket the system will usually behave as though there is a wiring problem or a missing chip this could even